can a marriage where friendship has been destroyed be revived again where love has also turned to indifference where love has turned to indifference can that marriage be restored and my answer to that question of course is yes yes a marriage that has really gone that has been destroyed friendship has been destroyed can be recovered and the reason why i believe that is god is with you number one beyond that that's where you started from you were not friends at first and then you became friends and there's something that brought you together and it's still there and that is number one god wanted you to be together or number two and number two there's some chemistry there's something about each other that brought you together and so if you can do the work that it requires and build step by step without rushing just like you would excuse me that just like you would do with a plant you put the seed and you water it and you consistently follow the process you will get the fruit so the same way if you want to build friendship in your marriage regardless of how destroyed it is even like you said even if there's indifference you can build it all you have to do is get ready to follow the steps and build systematically consistently not attaching yourself to the results just focusing on the process some plants take longer to produce if you get discouraged just because you're not seeing the fruit and you uproot the thing then you you destroy the whole process so you want to follow the process and i i want to encourage you if you follow the process number one it will transform you and then you will see the friendship rebuilt now what do you need to do what are the steps that you need to take i'm going to show you the the roadmap again because that's where all of this needs to be looked at. So here is the roadmap. You can start with yourself. Have a joyful heart. That's what you want. You want to make sure that you are having a joyful heart, regardless of where your husband or your your wife is. All right. You want to know that. Look, I am having a joyful time in God. I have joy in my heart. And regardless of what happens around me, there's that joy. If you can fix that, that's the first step. Then, and in order to fix, fix that, you know what you need to do. You need to make sure that you remove the negatives in your heart. Everything that you feel is wrong and your husband has done or your wife has done to hurt you, you learn to release that, release the blame. And how do you do that? By recognizing that they do things because they want to be loved. Now, all of this I've already taught previously, so I'm not going to go deep into them. Just please watch the videos, follow them step by step. But what you want to do is, having discovered and and taken responsibility for your own joy, what you want to do next is build a massive love tank. And what does that mean? People all around the world are hungry for um, unconditional love. They want to be loved for who they are. They want to be loved regardless of their errors and their mistakes. They want to be valued regardless of how tall or beautiful or articulate or not they are they want everybody wants that but because they do not know how to get that everybody's trying to steal it from others in order to continue to love regardless of what people do you then have to connect to a source of unconditional love that is not exhaustive and that is from god you learn to tap into god and center yourself in god such that when people do the wrong things when the enemy attacks you whatever happens you never trigger into the negative now that is where you are going to you may not be there instantaneously but if you work on it there are videos there are three videos that i've done to to do that so go please watch them but the key is that once you do that so you are responsible for your own joy you take responsibility and start having joy from God second thing take responsibility for your actions and connect to God such that when people try to do the wrong things you don't get triggered you continue to love them once you've done those two then you can begin to build friendship and we talked about friendship by asking questions that get you to know more about your spouse and get them to speak more about themselves and each time they speak you do not attack them you do not because you've already built yourself strong you're not you don't need them to do anything to make you happy you don't need them to do anything to make you feel joyful you already have the source of your joy so you bring in joy you bring in peace you bring in unconditional love something that's so rare 
into the mix and and what that does is that they they have to be attracted to that it's like someone that is starving of food and you have food why would you be worried that they will not come towards you they want to get what you have they want that love and and when they come to for that love they will learn that they can't keep stealing it at first they'll try to steal the love because that's all they know how to and that's why you see them get angry at you they they say words that you don't enjoy that are hurtful but if you continue to tap into God's love and still stay and love them, they will be transformed because number one, you learn how to put your boundaries. You learn how to speak firmly, but lovingly. And you, you're there. You're saying to them, look, I see you for who you are. And I am showing myself for who I am. Over time, that love will conquer um, that fear. And then when they see that there's an abundance, they will stop stealing. Just like a person does in real life. If someone is starving, they've not been having food and you give them food, they will steal it. They will rush it. They will... And then after a while, they see that, no, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have to. I don't have to. Then you see them, they see food and they will not rush to eat it all or stuff some in their bags. Why? Because they now see that there's an unlimited source of of joy and of peace and of love so this is how you build it but please do not be in a hurry don't don't rush to to change it if the marriage is still there and you are together then if you work hard on this process your marriage will be restored your friendship will grow we just have to be patient what i discovered that really puts strains on marriages is that people begin to operate at a higher level on step number three mostly they work on total partnership and blissful union without having any foundation. It's like someone trying to build a roof without the building. It's always going to be a massive frustration. So if you learn to build slowly and gradually from where you're supposed to, you will see the transformation that you want and the transformation that you need. 